So recording has started. Welcome again to our Rise and Learn Community of Practice. Today we are honored to have um, Ms. Jacqueline Milandi, uh, who will be taking us through this very interesting topic today, um, sexual harassment. Is it or isn't it? I think it's been quite a hot topic lately and uh, very interesting uh, conversations uh, that we'll be having today. Uh, that even include, you know, kind of sharing some case studies, um, own experiences, if you like. I invite all of you to participate. I invite you to ask questions uh, and please contribute as much as you can. This is your platform, as I always say. Um, and just like Jacqueline, any of you is welcome to present in our future uh, programs, uh, including coming up with a topic of your interest. It's really, it's really open. It's informal. It's it's just a one small family. So welcome, and um, yeah, looking forward. Please allow me to introduce um, Jacqueline Mulandi, who is a HR practitioner. She has a degree in human resources, and uh, she's about to graduate uh, with her CHRP. Uh, now you'll be calling her CHRP, Jacqueline Mulandi. So congratulations, Jacqueline. She just completed. Um, and uh, she's very passionate about developing people. She's an upcoming uh, young HR professional who's very passionate about creating great workplaces uh, for her colleagues. She's an avid learner. She's a go-getter. Uh, she's very passionate about what she does. And uh, specifically about this particular topic, uh, which takes a lot of courage, I think, to, to talk about. And I'm really looking forward to what Jacqueline has to share. So I'll let her tell us a bit more about herself as she begins uh, the session today. Welcome, Jack. Uh, thank you so much, Emily. Uh, thank you to the people participating. Uh, I welcome your views. Uh, I like a very, I like an engaging um, audience. So where you feel you need to ask questions, you can stop me. Where you feel um, you can, where you feel you want more clarity, you can mention questions in between. I'm open to it. Uh, so before I share what I'm about to talk to you about today, I wanted to tell you the genesis behind my courage to do this topic. My genesis what comes from me as a person, 14 years ago, is it 14? Let me say 13 years ago, when I was starting my, my employment and I was, I was caught up in an environment where this happened to me. And during that time, I remember it was very stressful because I, I was very young. I was very young and I was very naive. But thanks to my upbringing, I knew exactly what, what was I was supposed to do and uh, where I was supposed to head. And I'd also equally mention that in that same organization where I started from, I was privileged to have one person who is currently my best friend and my mentor who helped me through the process and who helped me uh, through let's say escaping the whole thing. And I remember after I left that organization five years later, that is where my aspiration to become a HR manager came in. And I was like, you know what? I want to be a HR manager because I don't want this to happen to any other young person outside. I don't want this to happen to any other young lady or any, any other person. And today I'm, I'm not going to be very specific on gender because this topic actually happens both ways. I want to mention that clearly. And equally, me starting this topic, the courage also where uh, in one of my employment sectors, when I was employed, I found this being very rampant and I felt like you know, I, I can't handle this. I cannot allow this to continue happening because when I was that, when that I was newly employed, I could see the environment. I could see how some of the managers were mishandling these young girls. Uh, and, and it was like, it was okay. And I'm like, no, it's not okay. And I, and I remember that time I went to my, to my supervisor and I, I told him, I reported one case scenario 
one case scenario whereby when I was doing my random inspections in one of the staff washrooms, one of the HODs was uh, happened to come into the staff washrooms with a waiter. And I'm like, okay, this is happening. Is this really happening? And I was shocked. It was just by random coincidence. And I, I, I remember I went to my supervisor, I'm like, this has happened. And what shocked me that he wasn't shocked. And after I left that meeting, I was like, as a HR, do you want this practice to continue happening under your watch? And I would also categorically say during that time of my employment, I was the young person in the, in the boardroom of managers surrounded by all the male, uh, male counterparts. And I felt like I need to stop this before it becomes a cancer, more or less. And I started, I did this content and I felt like moving forward for every new joiner, first for the people who are here, I'm going to do this training to tell them what sexual harassment is, what it is, how to go about it, what I will not condone. But mostly it was because I wanted to create a safe space for my employees, a safe space where my employees felt like they can come to my office to actually complain about such things. They can come to my office and feel like they, they are ready and willing to make such complaint. I needed to create that safe space. And the only way to create that safe space is by one, creating awareness. I wanted everybody in that platform to be aware that this is my thought about this particular action in this, in this environment. I do not condone this. I will not condone this moving forward regardless where it comes from. And uh, I hope after the training, the same thing will apply to each and every one of us. Because I feel as HR practitioners, we are there to provide a safe environment for our employees, whichever way possible. And this is a topic nobody wants to talk about. Yes, it is in our policies. Yes, it is in the law. But nobody wants to talk about it. And I feel like it should be even included in our induction process. Let our employees understand that the, this is what, as a HR, we think about this. This is what you not condone. And this is what you will do when this thing comes to my office. And I will say that successfully, me doing this training for each and every new joiner, me making this training as part of my induction has really helped my work environment has really helped the ladies, especially the young millennials in my work environment. And they feel safe. And I remember the time one of the ladies came to me and told me, HR, this is the best, this is the best uh, training you've ever done. And when our new, super, our new supervisor came into play, he told me, and when he was doing his inductions with all the employees to familiarize himself with the property, uh, and he asked, what is the most popular training you've done in this property? And all the employees were saying sexual harassment. And when my supervisor asked me why, and I'm like, yeah, because this is a topic that people don't want to talk about. People are shy to talk about it, but I'm not shy about it because of me personally, I was a victim and I knew how it felt 13 years ago being a victim of this process. And I felt like, and in fact, it is why, it is one of the reasons I decided to become a HR, to provide a safe environment for my employees. Uh, so with no further ado, I would like to start the training. And the training is, um, So it's more or less, uh, sorry. I think you, you can escape, yeah, there it is. So my training today is sexual harassment, is it or isn't it? So sometimes also the allegations that are brought into our office is, or uh, I want it to be very categorical, you know, what, what somebody is coming to complain about was it sexual harassment? Did you entertain it? Did you anticipate for it? That is why my subtopic is, is it or isn't it? 
And uh, so I'll just go to the objective. So the objective of this training will be what is sexual harassment, statutory regulations of sexual har harassment, which we all know as uh, we all know and we are aware about, behavior that portrays sexual harassment, is it or isn't it, groups of sexual harassment, effects of sexual harassment, basic steps of handling sexual harassment complaints, investigative process of alleged complaints, organizations plan to prevent sexual harassment, what I and you can do to prevent sexual harassment. So uh, first we need to understand what is sexual harassment? That is first thing that we need to be very clear about. And sexual harassment is unwelcome sexual advances or a welcome request of sexual favors or other unwelcome conduct of sexual nature, which makes a person feel offended, humiliated, and where the rash reaction is relevant to circumstances. So basically sexual harassment needs to make that person feel offended. Are you offended by this person's advances? Are you humiliated? Are you intimidated? So that is whereby I, uh, my topic is very, is it or isn't it? Because when you're coming, when somebody is coming to put forth their case, I would first find, was they, were they offended? Some, some case scenarios as we are going to go ahead will be like, no, that was just a compliment. How would you not be, off how would you be, how would you say that as sexual harassment? I was just complimenting, but it doesn't matter. The point is, did the pers was the person offended? Was the person humiliated? Was the person, did the person feel intimidated? by the actions at play. So <clears throat> I'll also go ahead and ask the audience, what's the difference between sexual attraction versus sexual harassment? This was a very interesting question that some of my employees asked me, what if you were just sexually attracted to someone? Does that mean that person, uh, you, that person you are, is that, does that content as sexual harassment? No, there is a very justifiable difference between sexual attraction and sexual harassment. So I'd prompt one of our audience, what is the difference? Guys, let's be active. <laughs> so what is the difference between sexual attraction and versus sexual harassment? And Hello? Shumasi has a comment. Yeah. Yes, Raymond. Hello. I was I was reading Masi's comment and I, I think somebody wanted to speak. Masi says attraction, romance. Uh, do you want to expand a little bit, Masi, on the difference? Um, uh, when I look at sexual attraction, I see like the person who is interested to have this sexual attraction is looking into in a romantic way. So what's going to come out of that is going to be probably a romantic relationship between the person and hopefully if they're not strong enough to come out of it, they'll end up in that way. But harassment, there'll be thoughts of anger, relentless, and um, in, in terms of the person is not comfortable every time they interact with that with a junior or whether the person is a manager or a fellow colleague, yeah. Masi, you're very right, you're very correct. Uh, was... yes. so, so is there another is there another person who wants to give it a try? I think there was a gentleman on the line. Okay, I think we can move on. So sexual harassment is a form of discrimination and I'll echo what Marcy said, yes, sexual attraction is whereby two people, it is uh, you are attracted to somebody genuinely, whereby you are perceiving to have a genuine relationship with this type of a person and you are genuine with what your feelings are. But I want to be categorical to say that sexual harassment is a form of discrimination and has nothing to do with one's person's physical attraction. But it's also a very thin line because you can be attracted to someone sexually, but the other person does not actually echo your feelings or does not actually uh, abide by what you want. So you need to be very, 
it's a very thin line actually it's very thin line and i would even say here that uh this is whereby the thin line needs to be obeyed if i'm sexually attracted to you i this there are those advances i will make and if at all you feel the other party the other person is not making those advances that is the way you feel like you need to back off you just need to back off because the moment you don't back off it now comes to sexual harassment because you are you are forcing yourself into a situation this other party does not want this other party does not feel accustomed to. So yeah, sexual harassment is a form of discrimination and has nothing to do with one person's physical attraction. It is misuse of power. I want to say for sexual harassment to take place, it is a situation whereby the other person wants to, to overcome by, by use, mis you're using, mis misusing your powers, a HOD, you feel like you're attracted to somebody, this person is saying no, but you know very well that this person wants something from you in terms of maybe at the end of the year that they're, they're getting an evaluation from you and you know this is the time to take an advantage. So this is whereby you're misusing your power because this person, they have no, they have no choice but to do this. I'll give an example when I was an intern. Uh, <laughs> It was very funny for me at that particular time. When I was an intern, a waiter comes to me and tells me uh, this newly employed FNB manager has just come in and they are telling them to go serve them in their hotel, in their rooms. And this lady came crying. I'm just an intern. She came crying to me and I'm like, okay, so this is happening. And I remember I went to my boss and I told my boss, this is happening. And thank God that time my boss took action. And when we followed up, we realized this person was misusing their power of his own department to lower these ladies to his rooms so that he can be able to take advantage of them. So it is misuse of power. Okay, Jacqueline, there's a comment from Susan. Susan, do you want to share a bit more? She says it's not always about power. Uh, I agree. Uh, let me tell you, uh, in sexual harassment, yeah, I, would, I, would, I would want to say and put a comment like 95% 90, of sexual harassment always comes to a point whereby it's always the person who has advantage over the other. I'll go even to a, a case scenario of, not, of our small kids. Why would a small child be sexually harassed or sexually abused is because they're being sexually abused by an adult, an adult who knows better, but they decide to misuse this child because they do not know what is best. That is misuse of power. They at, are, are they're at an advantage point. They know better, but they decide no. This kid does not know anything. They manipulate the situation. They intimidate the situation. So 95 percent of the time it's misuse of power 90 95 percent of the time i'll actually go ahead and discuss the five percent of the time i'll also categorically Before say you... jackie maybe just to pause a little bit and allow susan before you go to the the details uh susan you had a point to make on that and also there was a gentleman on the line Please pick up so we can move on. Suzanne? Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, Emily. Um, while agreeing with Jacqueline, but uh, I also want to, to believe that uh, it's not about power, uh, so to speak. Uh, sometimes it's about uh, proximity and influence uh, when it comes to a work environment. Now, there are those, as actually mentioned by Jacqueline, who tend to misuse their positions and power. Uh, but what if you reverse, where the juniors have had experiences where the junior staff, that the interns and the lower cadre employees harass their seniors, they provoke them, so to speak. So in terms of that kind of influence, how do you 
plays that because that is not a power game as such. <laughs> that is, you become vulnerable <laughs> by virtue of your being there. Um, it so happened that um, one of my colleagues worked in an environment where there were only ladies. And every other time there were conflicts. Why? Because every lady in that environment could not condone any other person talking to this gentleman. So there was unnecessary competition. There was nothing to do with power. So as much as I want to agree with Jacqueline, but I'm also hesitant because of the scenarios that have been unfolding in different work environments. My contribution, Jackie. I do appreciate and I agree with you. Uh, and as I move on to this uh, training, I'll actually, you, your sentiments will actually be, uh, will be acknowledged. It is very true what you're saying. That is why I say 95% of the time it's misuse of power. Now, 5%, 5%, yes. Me as being a lady is more, is more of a manipulative situation. And I want to say that uh, when I'm doing this training, I'm not going to be very categorical in terms of gender. I'm going to be very broad. Yes, even, and please uh, forgive me <laughs> for saying this. Sometimes uh, as women, some of us can take advantage of our male counterparts and their weakness. And we can, we can actually be able to detect this person, this is their weakness. This is how I can get, uh, this is how I can get them. And they are there. And I, again, I, I, want to, I want to be very categorically to say, I, uh, I'm apologizing to the male counterparts here when I say this. Um, in nature, men are sexually weak in nature. In, it's, it's, it's in nature. And women, some of us women, we, have, we, ha we know that. We actually know that. There are some men who are uh, weak in, uh, sexually and we like to take advantage of this situation so that we can be able to get one or two things. So you're very correct, but half of the time it only happens like 5% of the time. It's never the bigger picture. It's always the, the smaller picture. And when, I, when I'm do, and as I, I can go on with this training, I'll be able to also state that uh, men, in, we, we should be careful. We should be careful to monitor. In fact, this is what I even tell my uh, my my colleagues at my workplace. We should be able to be very careful when somebody. Uh, we should be able to be very careful when you're dealing with your juniors. Categorize them. Know what somebody is coming to you to do. Some of these people know that ah, if I do one, two, and three with this person, I'll I'll get my promotion. So it is about us managing our weaknesses. It's about us managing managing our what is it? Can I say managing our edges? And it's about and I'm not even saying it's only men or even women. Women even us we, we fall victims sometimes. And um, most of the times, as we go on with the training, are they able to express how this happens? Am I allowed to go on? Yes, please. Uh, maybe we can go on so that we can leave room for questions. Um, okay. So as I said, 95% 90, 90, of the time, it's always about misuse of power. 5% is about intimidation. It's about uh, manipulation and vindictiveness from the other gender or from the other party. So who do people... Why do people harass others? So why do, do you feel you need to harass? Why do, do they, why do these people feel they need to harass people? Express of dominance or power. Again, uh, I'm, I'm in a position of power and authority. I can get what I want. You want this, give me this. Sexual gratification. Again, I go back to the gentleman. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I didn't get your name. But sexual gratification, you have desires. Uh, which is actually psychologically speaking, it has been proven. Sexual gratification is actually a disorder. Some people have this disorder and they feel like when I want to sexually get towards a person, a, an abuse comes. And it's also been seen even worldwide. Sexual gratification can even be a disorder towards somebody getting attracted to small girls, getting attracted to a certain category of people. 
even a certain category of men. So this is why people harass others. Sometimes it's just a disorder. Bullying tactics. Sometimes, and I go back to where by uh, our junior staff. One wants to bully the other and they feel like they can, they can best harass in that particular situation. Gender-based violence, what is currently going on in our media places, whereby one gender is being violated uh, through sexual ways in uh, through sexual means so this is just another a form of harassment then attempt to seek peer approval you know it is appalling whereby i i came to my staff i've i've been able to create a relationship with my employees whereby i am able to know that sometimes uh, a category of group will want to actually sexually harass a, a particular employee because one wants to seek a peer approval towards that section like okay not to tapata, i'm sorry i hope there is no person who doesn't understand in kiswahili here uh so because i'm going to go to kiswahili now whereby an employee say okay lo 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 nendia hule unaniata nani atawezana na hule ominta sorry Okay, so let me go back to English. Sorry what, for that. What does a start here and end here? Sorry, I can't hear you. These are art letters. No, so, you know. Okay, just proceed. I think someone is, needs to be muted. Proceed. Okay, so where the attempt of to seek peer approval is whereby in a group of people and you feel like you want to hunt one particular person in that organization or in that particular group. So they're, they're your cheering squad. Okay, I can hunt that lady. So also that is just another way of why people harass others. Lack of knowledge of the implications. As I started this training, I said, Yes, this training is in our policies, it is in our laws, but nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody, nobody has the courage to tell employees, this is the implications that happen. Some, some of us, it's just in the policies, just in our code of conduct, we expect the employees to understand and learn, but some of them, even, I'm sorry, to even our seniors, they just overlook it because they just don't know, they don't understand the implications ahead of this, then an act of obsession. Somebody can be obsessed with you and they just decide, you know, you are the one I want. So I decide I'm going to harass you just because you are the one I want, because I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with a certain kind of gender, maybe a certain kind of color, a certain kind of shape and uh, a certain, so many weird things. And I, I actually dug deeper when I was doing this, uh, this uh, research and I realized some of this harassment is actually a disease. It's actually a disorder where somebody just feels they need to, uh, I'm obsessed with you because of your color, of your shape or because of how you look and I decide to harass you. So these are the, why, why these are the reason, different reasons why people will harass. Uh, Jacqueline, sorry before you go on. <clears throat> yes, uh, I'm Raymond from Tanzania. Uh, point of correction is not that uh, no one will understand Kiswahili in that uh, training. Please, I can teach you. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm saying in terms of Kiswahili, maybe we have internationals who don't understand Kiswahili, so I need yeah, to... Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, I understand. Yes, a joke. Balance. Yeah, sorry. Uh, looking at the that harassment, uh, yeah. maybe we are based much on the on one side. Eh? Uh, we are looking at men, uh, not on the other side. Uh, maybe if we put in percentage-wise, it's uh, like uh, seventy by thirty. Seventy percent, uh, maybe it's a man. Then uh, thirty percent is on the other side, the women. That uh, men they have more power to harass. Them than the women. But nowadays we have seen uh, the very powerful women whereby they can harass you by any means. Uh, and uh, it's falling under the last point, eh? an act of uh, obsession. obsession. Eh? Yes, because I want you, it has to be that way. 
So that's the kind of uh, some experience that we have experienced nowadays from the uh, women. Huh? Again, if I look at uh, from my experience from my origin country where I come from, it's the same percentage of 70 by 30 that men are more harassing the women than the uh, women harassing the, uh, the men, especially on the workplace. Good part, I'm also working on uh, with a non-government organization, and we are meeting that uh, obstacles with the other harassment that uh, sometimes they can't talk. Sometimes you see even the HR, they are involved with this harassment. So looking at that uh, training is very useful to me, and please go ahead. Thank you very much. And as I echo what you're saying, and that is why this training does not focus on one gender, it focuses on both genders, whereby, as I had repeated and said, even men, you are in danger. You are in danger. I'm sorry to say that we are in, a, in, a, in an environment, as I look at generation wise, I look at my young, I look at my young employees in their twenties and they feel how do I get to the next level? How do I get to the next level? And they feel like if I want to be promoted, my, my boss is a, is a male counterpart. This is the best way I can get promoted. And I will say this, uh, last month, but one, I had, a, I, had an I had a staff meeting and I said, I, I categorically said, and I'm like, when it comes to performance appraisals, which I'm very active on, performance appraisals for me will be based on your performance. Will not be based on, and I, and I said it's in a staff meeting, will not be based on what you're doing or what you think you can get advantage of. And when I say that in that meeting, it is because I realized there are some people, it's, it is maybe lack of knowledge, lack of innocence and not, not, not knowing what, especially what they're supposed to do. They feel like for me to go ahead, I need to, take advantage of this person's weakness. And that you can go back and, as I said, uh, I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm, men are just sexually weak. And as women, some of us women, we have actually identified that. We have identified that uh, this, our male counterparts are sexually weak. If I want to be, be get promoted, this is how I'm, get, I'm going to get promoted. So me, when I do my trainings, I am very, open and I tell them, take note, when I'm doing my appraisals, I see, I monitor, and I will be able to assess the situation. And when I'm doing this training to my employees, I always tell them, both sides, it is, it is, it is, it is a both sides situation. And it is more of what you are saying, 70, 30, I will actually disagree with you, it's actually 90, 10%. So allow me to continue because of time. Okay. So yeah. I go back yes, to please. who are the harassers? Anyone can harass, just as anyone can be target of harassment, regardless of gender, regardless of sexual preference, age or professional position. Nowadays we have uh, a group, we call, are they called LGBT, the lesbians? Those also, also I, I remember, I had a, a specific case in my current establishment. And luckily I knew this person was this way. And when this allegation was brought to my office, I was like, there's no way. There is no way this person can be harassing this, this girl because I know what this person is. So anyone can harass, be it a man, be it a woman, be it whatever gender, preference, anyone can harass professional position it is a sexual harassment has become broad one we are we are using this power as one as a source of power one as a, as a source of intimidation one as a source of, of understand your weakness this is what i'm going to go for i'm going to get you this is how i'm going to go i'm going to accelerate to my next level so i'm not being gender biased here it's it actually goes both ways. So uh, statutory regulations on legal background and sexual harassment, I'm happy to say as a country in Kenya, I don't know about Tanzania, we have acts that actually protect 
people against sexual uh, offenses. Act number three, uh, an employee is uh, act um, uh, sorry, uh, whereby the sexual offense act number three, two zero zero six, whereby it categorically, it specifically says about sexual harassment. What somebody can do, it can be imprisoned for three years. You can as well get a fine for a hundred thousand shillings. Recently, I've also seen a new, a new employment, the new draft of Employment Act in Kenya, whereby they say that if you are five people in, a, in an organization, you need to have a sexual harassment policy, because it has been known that this is a, a case that needs to be handled. This is a problem in our organization. This is a problem in our country. So in a, an act is being revised, and they're saying five people in an organization, it, it is an alarming situation. It's also highlighted in our Employment Act, and it also it is very technical. And I always wonder to myself, like, do employees understand the technicality, the, the nitty gritties? Because it goes to language, visual, physical, sexual. And I'm happy about our Employment Act because it elaborates. It does not, that does not categorize where sexual harassment is. I go back to my first introduction. Sexual harassment only applies when the other person is offended. Am I offended with what you're saying? Am I offended with your, with your, with your visual, language, physical, and other preferential treatment? And our, as you can see from my presentation, it's clearly indicated. So is sexual harassment an active risk? Yes, it is. I will say it is an act of discrimination, again, which is covered by Employment Act. Because when you're sexually harassing, it's, it's getting for promotions. Again, it's getting of it's so, Sorry, to Jacqueline, can you get back uh, one slide, please? Here? Yeah? No, 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 the same with the pictures, huh? Is sexual harassment yes, an act one. of Yes, it is. Yes, I'm, I, no, I'm looking at these uh, pictures, uh, and it tells me something. Uh? Yeah. A man, yeah. two men with uh, a woman, with a two women with one man. Looking at the fixed picture, uh, two men uh, taking one uh, girl, whatever, with the two girls with one man. Seems like two girls, one man is okay. But when you go two men with one girl, it's not okay. Can you see that uh, gender equality? Even if the girls here will be three against one man, uh, it's okay. Looking at these uh, three men with one girl, it's not okay, it's harassment. Have you seen that uh, gender equality? Can I say something? Can I say something? Raymond, can we, Raymond can, can we let uh, the presenter finish? This is just visual, just to try and, you know, she, she's trying to make her presentation look so good. So let's not try to read so much into it. Let her finish, then I think we'll have a plenary. Cindy? Yes. I this think. is Ruth. That's a good point, Lydia. Thank you. Let's that, move that's on. A, that, that, that's okay. That's okay. Thanks, as, Raymond. As I'm Thanks, moving Raymond. on, as I'm moving on, my, my picture presentation is a clear indication that harassment can be both ways. A uh, male can harass a woman and female can also harass a man. So the, the image presentation is a, is, a, is a clear way that sexual harassment does not only fall on one gender, it falls on both genders. Uh, as I said, yes, sexual harassment is an act of discrimination. It's getting a promotion. Yes, I want to be promoted. If I feel like I want to be promoted by sleeping with you, by all means, I'll sleep with you to get promoted because I have acknowledged your weakness, your sexual weakness. So I feel like if I want to be promoted to the ladder, this is how I'm going to get my promotion. To get employment, I've realized, uh, sorry to say, some of us, even our HR practitioners, we are actually going this direction of sleeping with people, instigating uh, sexual favors to employ people. 
So if I know this is your weakness, I'll actually go with it. And I, I'm actually going, I'm, again, I'm not gender bias. It's both ways. Brings about favor in the workplace. Of course, if I sleep with you, if this is what I'm going to do, you're going to favor me. You're not going to discipline me. You're not going to, there's no way you're going to reprimand me when I'm doing wrong. So uh, at the end of the day, I always, always have the upper hand, regardless of what. So is discrimination in the Employment Act illegal? Yes, it is. Section 5A, promote equality of employment in order to eliminate discrimination in employment. So discrimination also is illegal. Despite there being a sexual, a sexual, uh, sexual violence in the employment tax, even discrimination, which actually is promoted by sexual harassment, is also illegal. So it's, you can see our employment act really factors a lot in, that, in terms of our uh, protecting an employee. This is very important. Note, submission to sexual activity by the employee citing harassment is not a defense an employer can use to avoid liability in a sexual harassment suit. Again, I am a woman. I have decided for me to get promoted, I've, I've acknowledged your weakness. You, you are, you are, you're weak because I can sleep with you. I want to be promoted, then you don't promote me. What will I do as a woman? This, is, this, this was my agenda. My agenda was I wanted to be promoted, I wanted my salary, my salary to be increased, but you didn't do it, despite me sleeping with you. I will go uh, as well and say sexual harassment. Now, in a court of law, will you say that this person was submitting? No, he will not. And uh, take you me with the new current scenarios of uh, with our technology, people are saving messages, people are saving WhatsApp photographs, calls. They have act acute evidence and they will come and say, you know what, me being a junior staff, I was weak, I was fearful, I did not know better. So submission to sexual activity by an employee citing harassment is not a defense. So it always will always go wrong to the employer at the end of the day. So behavior citing sexual harassment. Take note as I go back to what I had said in the beginning, it's what offends me. Staring and leering. If you stare at me and I'm offended, that's sexual harassment, by the way. Again, the word is offend. That, is it offensive? Is it intimidating? That's, that, that is sexual harassment. But if I'm not offended, it means I'm, I'm accepting whatever you are bringing on board. And it's very familiar, such as deliberately brushing against you are welcome touching. It, it is appalling whereby somebody will just come to you and put their arms just across you, or maybe your, your breast or something. It, it is wrong. It is just wrong. That's sexual harassment. Suggestive comments or jokes. When I was doing this <laughs> training, I remember I used, there was a narrative in my in my workplace where women were being referred to as mboga. Hey, I'm like, what is mboga? There's one day I found a chef saying, Ile mboga ni tamu. and I'm like, what are you referring to? And when I, I investigated, I'm like, they were referring to a waiter. So I called that guy, I'm like, what are you referring to? Why are you referring to her as mboga? And when I was doing this training, I was asking my lady employees, why are you allowing yourself to be demeaned to a cabbage, a cabbage, really? That is demeaning, that is demeaning. So I, I realized I had to stop this such narrative, suggestive comments, or, it's not a joke. Don't call me, don't refer to me as Mboga. What are you trying to say? I'm a woman, I'm a lady. Me ni Mboga kiaze, apana. So forcefully seeking private information where somebody tells you, I want your telephone number, where do you live? That is my private information. When you're forcefully, continuously asking for it, that's sexual harassment. Why do you want to know about my number? Why do you want to know where I live? It's none of your business. That's my private affair. Displaying posters, magazines, or screensavers of sexual nature, still wrong. That's sexual harassment. When you're calling an employee into your office and you've displayed a pornography site in your computer, what are you trying to communicate to that employee? That is an indirect 
communication to that employee of, of your intentions or of your wants. Sending sexual expressions emails or texts. When you're sending me emails or pornographic sites, and, and for sure I was a victim of this when I was newly employed somewhere. Somebody decides to send me a WhatsApp message or something that was going viral that time, actually in 2019, of a lady who was being exposed by the husband for, uh, for, marital, for marital affairs. And the, the photos are very explicit. And this person decides to send me these photos. I was like, what are you trying to communicate? What? What are you why do you think it is okay for you to send me such a such a WhatsApp message? It's not okay. That's sexual harassment. And my action then was immediately to block this person. Because in my mind, I was like, you don't know better, but I need to tell you that I will not accommodate this moving forward. Sending explicit emails and texts. So it's more or less on the same nature in a popular event on social media networking sites. This is something actually it's currently happening in our world where somebody goes to your site, they they taunt you, they as in they try and seek your seek your private information. They are there that that's just forcibly that is sexual harassment. What why are you doing it? What is your intention? What is your thought process behind it? Insults or trance of sexual nature. Sexual harassment, intrusive questions or certain about one private life. Why are you thinking about? In fact, if there's something I've I have learned, I've created in my workplace is my private you an employee's private life is their private life. Don't tell me that an employee decided to say they are sick leave because, but no, they're not sick. I saw their social, I saw their WhatsApp status. They were in a party. Why were you going to their WhatsApp status? Why were you going to their social? Why were you why were you intruding? That is their private space. Stop intruding. Accessual species into internet sites, sexual harassment, requests for sexual or repeated unwanted requests to go out on dates. When you ask somebody for dates once, twice, three times, and they say no, dude, lady, stop. They don't want. Don't. The more you continue, uh, the, the more you continue forcing that sexual harassment. Stop forcing it. Once, twice, they've said no. Stop it. The more you continue sexual harassment. Behavior that may also consider as an offense under criminal law, as you have stated in the, in the statutory requirements. Now, this is the tricky part. Before this thing is reported to you. Decide whether the conduct is sexual harassment. Is it or isn't it? Take note, some, is, some situations are not sexual harassment. If I willingly gave you my phone number, if I willingly say to have your text the first day, I was responding to your text the second day, the third day, the first month, the second month, I was going to your dates the first month, the second month. That's not sexual harassment. You were, you were accepting it. That is accepting. Um, I, I remember I had, a, I had a conversation with my June, uh, with my family members, the ladies, and I told them, let me tell you something. The moment somebody asks you for their, your number, you give them your number, you have already opened the door to the nonsense and everything else they're going to provide. Whether they're going to tell you crap, whether they're going to give you all the things, you've already opened that door. So I always say, before taking action to complain about sexual, determine whether the action meets the criteria to qualify as sexual harassment. One, and that is why I do this training every for all new joiners as, a, as, a, as a, an induction process, because I want to make my employees know clearly. If your HOD is making this move, you can come to my office immediately and complain. The moment you don't complain and you've done this training, it means you are accommodating the fact that you are whatever they are actually bringing to the table. That is why I do this as an induction training. 
because I want them to know my my office is a safe space. Now my HOD was asking for my number. I refused two, three times. I take action. Because as we have seen, behaviors that portrays sexual harassment is forcefully asking for numbers. But if you don't come to complain to me that this person was asking was forcibly asking for your number, it means you are willing and accepting whatever this person was going to bring into the table. So I have a few casing points. Hey Jane, I like your dress. Is this sexual harassment or not? I bring I, I bring my audience to the table. Do you think if somebody compliments you is sexual harassment or not? Hey Jane, I did see you there as your coworker shuts down a, the porn on his computer. Sexual harassment or not? Hey Jane, if you don't sleep with me, we'll fire you. Sexual harassment or not? Uh, I don't know, if, Emily, if we have time to open the, this to the panel to answer. Yeah, I, I think uh, what I want to suggest is we open this up uh, so that people can comment. And uh, because this is a very, really topic of interest, I'd want to continue part two next week. Um, so I will let the audience maybe respond to what you have on the screen, and then we can close after that. Two to three. Lydia, Lydia says, yeah. Lydia, please go. Oh, who was on the line? Uh, uh, Raymond. Number one, number I like one. your dress. I like your dress. That is a compliment. Yes. Although it may depend on what you're wearing. <laughs> exactly. If you're scantily dressed, but anyway, you're the one who's worn it. So number one, I could safely say is not sexual harassment. Number two, it needs a bit of qualification. Hey, Jen, I didn't see you there. Where? Is it on the porn in his computer? If it's, he didn't see me on the porn on his computer, that's sexual harassment. Number three, definitely, definitely sexual Thanks, Lydia. Hello? Josephine, Josephine yes? Uh, this is Susan. I'd like to respond on these comments. Yes, please. Uh, uh, comment number one, that is uh, neither here nor there. I think we need to, be to put it in context. What is the context? Um, number two, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Jane, I didn't see you there. As your coworker shuts down the phone on his computer, a workplace computer should not be able to even access phone sites. So the, I think my comment is fire the ICT manager first and foremost, before it can even get to this level. Because where are the firewalls? Where is the security? So that one I'm not even going to comment. Maybe like the other lady said, if it was on his phone, yeah, and and then that brings the other the other element of what is the technology policy of the company. Uh, hey Jane, if you don't stay with me, I'll fire you. Such a of course that is sexual harassment. But the question is, where is the evidence? Nice. Yeah, there has to be Thank you. evidence that some of these things were being said because I've been in situations where I do sympathize with uh, my male counterparts. I sympathize with my male counterparts because sometimes they are taken totally out of context. Sure, sure. Um, Mary, Marianne Maruku has a question. Maybe Jack we can put this for next time. It says, could someone advise on office romance, how, how can we handle it? What if employees break up uh, then one of them states they were coerced into the relationship? Is that sexual harassment? So if someone has an answer, they can't respond. Otherwise, we will, we will also include it in the presentation next time. Raymond? Um, that's a very good... Yes, to respond on uh, 
but uh, number one, number one, it's the for me it's a compliment, but also depending on uh, what kind of dress as well as someone has retaliated before. Uh, number two, it's uh, definitely harassment, and even three, three harassment as well. Thanks, Raymond. Um, Jackie, do you, do you want to have some final thoughts? Maybe you can stop sharing your screen as you share your final thoughts, uh, Jackie. I'm going to answer that question about um, uh, people who are in a relationship. When I, uh, when, I do, uh, when I was doing this training for my employees, I categorically told my employees, if people are in a relationship, they need to come and declare in my office. Put it in writing. I'm, I'm in love with so-and-so, we're in a relationship. Basically, as a HR practitioner, you know, relationships are two ways. They, they can go well and cannot go well. So as a HR, I'm able to know if, if people have reported, I'm able to know if, if somebody comes and claims, oh, this person was harassing me, I'm like, no. Both of you came to my office and you, you filed a form indicating that you're in a relationship. I would like to say that even in the international organizations, they actually practice this, where people who are married or in a relationship, they come to the HR office and they fill a form. People in who are in a relationship, it's a, it's a tricky affair. Relationship is a tricky affair. I, I'm going to go for an example where I, I uh, last two months, the people who I knew they were in a, in a sort of a relationship and they come to the boardroom in the in a management level, they come to the boardroom, one is citing the other thing and I just laughed. Simply because I knew, wait, wait, wait a second, you guys are dating. You guys are dating and I, I knew, I knew. So I knew how to handle that situation because it was already brought to my attention from it. So this is something when I'm doing my training, I always tell my employees, there's a form to my office that you declare, I'm somebody so's wife, I'm your girlfriend. So when the emotions takes place, I'm able to know how to handle it. Because when emotions come to play, we're not able to, we, we won't be able to understand how to deal with it. But if, if at all you had prior information that these two are in a relationship, you're able to know how to deal with it. So this is something I'm actually very mm -hmm. strict about. May I respond? Yeah. Okay. Amazing, amazing. It's so many questions, so many comments um, around this topic. Um, I, I think as a HR practitioner as well, just to contribute, uh, I experience this a lot. Um, I think as HR, we have a responsibility to just create that enabling environment. If two people have found themselves in the organization and they like each other, also help them. Eh? Uh, I'm told now it's not easy to get spouses. So please encourage them. Uh, create policies that are enabling. Um, some of them have found ways to work in the same organization. Some companies allow that and others decide to maybe leave and go look for uh, an opportunity elsewhere. But I think we at least we have a responsibility on the side of the romance in the organization uh, as far as being able to handle the sexual harassment in a separate manner. Um, I really love your engagement today. Thank you so, so much. I, I want to respect your time. Uh, however, we will keep the line open for anybody who wants to keep asking questions. We'll be here. If, if you need to leave, uh, feel free to do that. But we're going to keep it open for further conversation. We will have part two next week, uh, same time. Uh, we'll extend it a little bit so that we end at 1.15. Uh, we'll have all the questions. Uh, Jacqueline's presentation covers most of the ones that I've seen there but I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. Please make sure you come back and thank you so much for your contributions today. Um, I now want to allow you to, you know, say hello, say your comments as we, as we wrap up. Thank you so much. And Jackie, thank you, well done. Uh, Emily. Yes, Dorothy. I wanted to find out now, um, because with sexual harassment, there are a lot of things you need to consider. But now, where, where, where do we draw the line between uh, sexual harassment and pure money? Because sometimes when an employee comes to complain that they've been sexually harassed, you don't have the evidence. So how do you, do, how do you go about it? Again, I go back. How you go about it? 
make this your induction process. Make it your induction process whereby employees know if this happens, they can come to you. Make your office be that office that people feel they have a safe space. That's what I've done for my employees. They know that HR is no nonsense when it comes to this. Uh, make it make the training. And as I, as I said, my, my, my training, we don't train. We assume that people know. We assume it is in their policy, people will follow. No, don't assume, train. And for sure, let me tell you, this is something I did two years ago and it has worked so well for me. And I've even set an example where my new supervisor came in board and when he was doing his survey with employees, he asked employees, this is the most famous uh, training and all employees were saying sexual harassment. And I smiled, oh yes, please note. Yes, I am no nonsense when it comes to this. Please train, please make employees know the do's and don'ts, make them know that I can run to the HR office if this person start coercing me. I can run to the HR office if this person is forcing me for my telephone number, my workplace. I'm happy to say that recently I employed a, an executive chef six months ago. And the comment he gave me is, this is the first organization where he has seen women's rights are actually respected. And I was happy when he said that, because employees know I can run to my HR. Do your employees know that they can run to you even when somebody forces them to, to take a phone call? Take note, as a HR practitioner, you are a parent first and a pastor. A parent whereby your employee knows if something, even the slightest happens, they can run to you. I have an open door policy in my organization whereby I want my employees to feel I can stand up for their rights. That's, it's, it's a clear sight. And that is why I actually even did this training because I felt like, yes, it is in our policies, it's in the law. Do we train? Do we make employees know that HODs, the HR knows she's anti this? The other juniors, the, H, the HR, I can run to her. That is the safe space need for us to create in your organization. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for those closing remarks. Beautiful, Daphne, you did a great mm -hmm. job. You're getting a lot of love from the chat as well. Uh, so for everyone else, we will take this conversation online to our and Learn HR community. Um, Catherine has shared the link on the chat. Please join the community so that we can interact even before the part two. I'll share the link for part two as well on email so you can join. Thank you once again for joining today. I wish you a pleasant week ahead. Thank you.